Hello everybody, welcome to the Mad Palace Podcast. My name is Aidan Ng, author of the Chronicles of Terra web serial novel and the host of today's episode. For those joining us, the Mad Palace is a podcast by a group of writers of varying backgrounds, publication histories, experiences, and genres. We're here to talk about anything and everything to do with writing and storytelling. So now let's see, um, let's introduce our guest. Hi, I'm Ryan Watt. I am the author of the web serial Flocked and other associated stories. Uh, yeah. And my name is J.A. Waters. I am the writer slash author of a bunch of stories that have to do with a made-up world called Nalan. Um, one of them in particular, Lincia. And you can find me at J.A. Waters Author on Twitter. Okay, so... um. For today, we are doing something a little different. We're doing a, a book game. So just to explain to our audience, uh, we've all read um, a book. Uh, they are non-mainstream books. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell each other the title of the book, and we're going to try to guess what the book is about, what the story is about. I'm assuming everyone has their own books. Yes. I do. Does anyone want to go first? Okay, the title of this particular story is The Queen of the Guardhouse. Oh, that sounds um, oh. sounds like a... Um, I don't know. It sounds like it could be a bondage book. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, that is not where my mind went at all. That's, that's quite a leap you made. I, I don't know that I would have um, gone there. I... I don't know. It's just something about the word queen when you put it in something. It just sounds very... <laughs> just just shows my um, the possibility of my internet search history. Oh, no. <laughs> well, then. Um, do you have any particular guesses, Ryan? Oh, I'm trying to think what it would be about. I mean, it definitely sounds... Um swashbuckling ask you know I, I can imagine a field protagonists uh fighting um I, I think queen's probably not a literal queen i feel like it's probably more metaphorical or maybe she she becomes a queen um probably class issues in a feudal society um but that, that's just a rough guess based on very little information i mean you've got a pretty good I mean, you, you actually described a lot of the things that are in this story. So, I mean, good job. Ooh. Does that well, mean uh, Ryan wins? Um, I don't know. Does he get a point? Does he get 500? I don't know. <laughs> I've um, never had a point before. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm sure you've made plenty of good points. <laughs> hmm points um ryan gets a point <laughs> okay <laughs> took me long enough uh, oh okay um okay let me make a proper guess um uh it it, it sounds fantasy in genre so i'm guessing i'm terrible in this game <laughs> <laughs> This was your game. Oh, no, don't remind me. <laughs> you were the one that suggested it, so... Uh, oh, well, I, I guess I'm just going to have to go in my deep, my original answer, which is a fantasy bondage. Oh, sorry. no. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, so, uh, Joe, do you mind uh, like trying to explain the book? Okay, so this is... I'm, I'm kind of cheating... Uh, about this particular story this is actually a um it's a story by kr campion or one of our own and this is uh, <laughs> okay this... i was no. wondering I, I was wondering if it was from <laughs> crown anthology it is from no, the no, it, is, I... it is from the crown no, anthology and um no no, no i feel bad <laughs> The queen of the <laughs> guardhouse is about a bodyguard, um, and she is a bodyguard to the prince of the, you know, of the throne of this particular kingdom. 
And so she is the queen of the guardhouse, quote unquote, because she is the one that's like in charge of the guardhouse and she's um, fighting off some. Uh, I'm trying not to spoil the story either, but she's fighting off some people that are trying to take over the kingdom. And in that, there's some class struggle of the differences between what the king and the queen think is appropriate and she's a guard but she's also kind of got a (coughs) thing for the prince and that's not necessarily allowed but they don't really care so there's some some of that stuff going on it's like a romeo and juliet thing uh there's a little bit of that it's not really that emphasized it's more the emphasis is more on um probably just um raela finding uh her footing on becoming better at her job and that kind of stuff all right. Hmm. And where can we uh, where can we read this? Um, and I'm sorry, Ka, I didn't read this. <laughs> <laughs> so the the and queen of those <laughs> the queen of the guardhouse, and um, <laughs> there's actually uh, I think eight more stories in this particular uh, anthology. Um, you can get the crowned anthology on Amazon.com. Cool. Um, Ryan, do you want to go next? Sure, I can go next. Yes. Um, so um, just just to narrow down my list of options here, how offbeat and path do we want to go? Like, Do we want to go, you know, is it okay to go quasi-mainstream? Do we want to go something really, really more obscure? Well, what were your thoughts? Oh, it's, uh, it's up to you, but um, not too mainstream. Like, don't go into Harry Potter and stuff. That Things that are easily, you know, Googleable. Uh, I see. So we, we don't want things that are, that right. are, Google, that are easily Googleable. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Mm, okay. if... Oh, I see. So, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, so obviously, if I think you Google the name of the book, it should pull up. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So then I'll go with my original thoughts. So my original thought was, every heart a doorway. Hmm. <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna go ahead and think that this is some kind of. Well, I don't know. I don't know that I think it's entirely romantic. <laughs> It's not. It doesn't sound like a romance. It's probably a little bit too. Um, I don't know. It, it feels a little bit too vague to be a romance. Romance titles usually feel more direct with their. These people are romantic. Um, other than that, I think maybe it's some kind of soul searching slash um, trying to know oneself sort of story. Maybe there's some kind of. Um, journey or uh, interaction with someone else that leads them to um, breaking out of a um, some kind of oh man I'm like really stumbling over my words but really I think the idea that I'm getting at is that it sounds like a story where someone uses another person's heart or a relationship and not like a literal taking their heart out of their chest but they figure out something with the help of someone else okay um my first guess would be something like that i guess it'll be a romance story but yeah like joe said romance story are usually very direct you know uh so i'm gonna make a wild a really wild guess i'm saying it's a thriller um it sounds like uh some it sounds like a title like Dean, that Dean Koons would come up with, like <laughs> the corner of my eyes or something. Um, almost as if someone is using the heart to manipulate someone, uh, manipulating someone's heart to get close to them for some nefarious evil reason. I'm probably really, really off, but you know, there's always the chance that I'm right. <laughs> Final answer. I guess so. So Can I phone a friend. I... <laughs> <laughs> so so J A is closer on this one. He pretty much nailed a lot of the themes, a lot of the ideas. It's actually sort of a a reflection on portal fantasies. Hmm. Um, the idea of it uh, it's by um, author Shauna McGuire, who is a wonderful fantasy or <coughs> fantasy writer, um, and the idea is. Um, there is a a boarding school for people, mostly girls, who have returned from 
portal fantasies like Wonderland or Oz or, or wherever. Uh, and this is a school for folks who are having to try to learn how to be back in our worlds, but are desperate to go back to the worlds that they visited. Uh, and so it's it's focusing around one girl who attends this school, um, what happens while she's there. Um, there is a murder mystery. Um, so there is a bit of an element of a thriller there. So they didn't got that part right. Um, uh, but yeah, it's mostly just about portal fantasies, about identity, about journeys, and mostly when the journey ends, what happens next. That's interesting. Um, and, and it's, it's, it's won several awards. It's a fantastic book. It's the start of a series of independent books that are all in the same idea of <coughs> looking at portal fantasies and gender and identity politics um, in, in new and different ways. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I, um, I can't and... recommend it enough. All right. Um, where uh, do you have any um easy place for us to find this book, or just Amazon? All over right now. I mean, I would say Amazon, um, iBooks. Um, it, it was released by by Tor dot com as part of their attempt to do more um novellas um online. So it, it should be pretty easy available most places online. All right. Cool. Um. So I guess it's my turn now. Um. Uh, all right. Um. My book title is. 0.4. Oh. 0. Yeah. 0.4. That's it. 0.4. Right. Yeah, um, right, the so. full title. That, that's a, there is a full title. Um, 0.4, it's a brave new world. Um, so is, is a brave new world part of the title, like a subtitle? Or is it more yeah, the, the 0. 0.4 is the main title, and it's a brave new world is like a sub- subtitle. Okay. Uh, my, my first thought would be sci-fi. Um, hard sci-fi I'm um, thinking probably in literal worlds um, you know it's it's calling to mind you know things that my dad had a lot when I was a kid um, you know old you know really really hard hard edged very mathematical very um, dense writing sci-fi um, so I'm seeing either uh, a spaceship going to another planet or uh, a device to try and access alternate timelines or alternates dimensions um, but in some way um, and, and part of the main character I would imagine is probably very uh, mathematically or scientifically minded not very humanities you know uh, emotionally based but more analytically based um, those are kind of my thoughts okay oh I was just saying yeah I, I get a I definitely go with the sci-fi <coughs> vibe um, 0. 0.4 it, it just makes me think of some kind of version number right off the bat. And when I think of version numbers, I think of either software or some kind of um, hardware and that versioning system that usually goes with the creation of that kind of stuff. And if it's sci-fi, then that leads me to believe either robots or AI. And so this makes me think it's an AR, AI or a robot book. And with the subtitle of Brave New World, that immediately makes me think of this is some kind of um, either dystopia where robots and AI have taken over, or perhaps they are in the process of being accepted into human life and dealt with in human life. Um, I also get a little bit of a vibe of, um, you know, because of the original Brave New World, that maybe this is some kind of um, how humanity screws things up a lot and creates their own kind of nightmare realities and maybe the robots are doing that to the humans or doing that to themselves kind of one of those look the robots are screwed up too so i don't know okay um uh i think joe is to the closest on this but it's um not uh completely right Uh, he's right in that uh in that the zero point four is actually a version number, and it's also a dystopia. And you guys are both right that it's a uh, sci-fi, uh, but it's a bit. It, it's one of my. It's actually one of my favorite book. It's written by a author called Mike Lancaster. Uh, it's a story. Uh, it's like a found footage story. Uh, they find these audio rec- uh, audio tapes of a character named Carl Strecker, and they listen to it about how the world ended previously even though 
the world uh, seemingly is carrying on as per normal and this is this is a dystopia story um and it's i i'm trying not to spoil it too much but it's really it, it goes into the whole uh, existential uh, idea that humanity uh might not be created uh might not have been born into this universe by itself there's a creation mythos in here but it's mm. not yeah but it's not very you know like religious kind of creation myth. so it's a very scientific creation mythos mm. and it's also a coming of age for because Carl Stryker is like a really young kid and it, it becomes this coming of age in a sci-fi uh, sci end of the world scenario uh, it's a really good book um, I can't say too much about the ending uh, I can't say too much about the twist without you know spoiling the twist itself because it's um, it's one of the most mind-blowing sci-fi and it's rated on my top sci-fi stories uh, that I've ever read it has a sequel awesome. called 1.4 Huh. Yeah, so currently there's two books out, 0 0.4 and 1.4, uh, and I really recommend it as well. Um, it's by an author named Mike Lancaster. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah, um, so I guess that point goes to Joe. So <laughs> if we're giving points, I guess Joe is winning. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess it's two to one right now. I mean... I, I I guess like this is like whose line is it anyway where the points doesn't really matter. I I <laughs> randomly give matter. you both a thousand points. <laughs> Do I get a post oven at least? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could. You, you just have to pay for it. Yes, <laughs> I will give you a toaster oven if you pay for it. Um. So, do we want to uh, do another one, another round? Sure, we have time for another round. Do you guys? Uh, do you guys have a second book, Robert? I do. I I can find a second book pretty easily. Yes. Yeah, so keep... so <laughs> All go, right. Go um, and... Yeah. I'll go with Joe first again. Okay, so I'm 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 cheating again, but I'm not cheating from the oh. same source. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this this story is called God Punk. Oh. Uh. It it will be terrible if it's a story written by one of us and we and we don't we don't remember. It. <laughs> no, the story is called God Punk. Like G O D Punk. No, 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 G. Oh yeah, sorry, G O D Punk. Yeah. Okay. Um. First thought, it's like cyberpunk, but with God in front. So I'm thinking religion. It's a religion punk. It's a religion punk genre. Like I would assume the story has a world of uh, that is based around religious a lot like um, Bioshock in, in Infinite, so it's, it's a, probably I'm gonna say Victorian. Uh, maybe it's a comedy with a because the the title sounds a bit hilarious. So I'm gonna go with a. Like a comedy with a Victorian setting and a religious undertone, maybe a little political. I feel like I'm very far off. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would. I'm thinking it's more contemporary. How contemporary, I don't know. Uh, it also could be an alternate world of some kind. Uh, but I'm going to guess probably contemporary um, our world roughly in the last 30 years. I'm thinking the idea might even be something like the main character gains godlike abilities um, and it, it has sort of a you know, it would fit in the same kind of realm of like steampunk or cyberpunk um, where there's, there's a hardness and edge to the character or grittiness. Um, I, I get a kind of similar feel to um uh, to some of your more recent works, Joe. Um, you know, the, I'm looking at the name of it now. Um, like, like, like with, with not off, kind of, kind of that that sort of a vibe to it. Of, of you know, really, a character who's had a really hard, tough, you know, grueling life, um, who gains some kind of abilities and tries to use that to kind of fight back against the the, the system. So that's that's so, final answer. 
Final answer. Locked okay. in. So I'm going to go ahead and say that Ryan is closer. Um, Damn it. <laughs> it, it's pro- <laughs> it, 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 it's that pro- toast <laughs> oven is mine. <laughs> It's, it's primarily because uh, his his description of the setting and the characterization of the main character and and I mean really the setting kind of really nails it um, for me as far as his description goes. So God Punk is um, it's a online novel. Uh, it was a serial at one point. It's finished now. It's written by Billy Higgins. Um, it's kind of film, film noir meets dark fantasy meets nihilism. Uh, it's about this journalist that he just so happens to witness the death of a god at the very beginning of the story, and then throughout the story he basically ends up... And this is where, Aiden, you get a lot of points here too, because he then kind of yeah, fo- yeah. follows a little bit of a war of gods, but it's not really a war of gods, it's more just like they're gonna end the world. Um... <laughs> Uh, oh, I, I get maybe like half a point, I guess. <laughs> uh, no, Ryan gets 15 million points and you get 12. <laughs> 12 points or 12 million? 12. I'm terrible at this game. I'm that's, not playing this again. quite generous. <laughs> but, okay. Whose so... idea was this? <laughs> uh, yours. But yeah, if you just... Uh. <laughs> You can you can find God Punk um, online uh, through the Web Fiction Guide or through you know Google. Okay, um, uh, Ryan, do you have a book or do I go? I do. I, I, go do. I actually I, I come up with at least four books, um, but I've narrowed it down to to one. I'm going to grab okay. it now, so you get the author's name in a few minutes. The title is Borderline. Hmm. Oh. Oh, I feel like I have this book in my shelf, but I don't think I've read it yet. <laughs> oh, what is, what is it about? Yeah. I'm I'm thinking well, that's, it's tr- that's what you need to figure out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> that's the point of the game. I I, I get that now. Um, I'm thinking it's thriller. Uh, it sounds like a book I have in my shelf of many many books. So I I mostly buy thriller books. So I'm gonna just go with my gut and say it's a thriller. Um, borderline sounds almost cop-ish, like a de- detective story. Um, some main character probably being pushed to the edge, borderlining insanity, trying to solve a case. That sounds close to what the title sounds like. It's a very serious title, you know. I mean, for all I know, given my luck so far, it could be a comedy and not a trailer <laughs> i i mean this could go this could go both ways because borderline like you know that that instantly conveys this image of someone who's either <laughs> nearly mad they're like they're borderline crazy or you know something of that sort but it's also like there's borderlines of you're on the line of um what's it called like good and evil or you know um right and wrong and all that kind of stuff so I'm trying. I'm on the fence. I'm not sure which one to go with. Is it, is it more like the actiony thing, or is it uh, delving into someone that's got mental issues and and they're um, and they're they're struggling with those mental um, problems? I I don't know. I don't know which way to 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 decide on there. I'm just gonna jump for. It does sound more like a thriller and. I, I want to say it almost sounds like a police drama. <laughs> um, maybe there's sorry, like a what drama? A police drama? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, police drama. I really, yes. I really, I really can't. I can't really glean anything else out of it. It's like borderline. This is a good practice for us when we're doing titles. Like, how how obvious is our title? Yeah. What does it What does it say about our story? Um, <laughs> borderline. Well, that's that's exactly why I chose this one out of the options I was looking at on my shelf, because I thought it would be interesting to see with 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 that little what you can get out of it. 
it, right. It, it, I, think... I thought I thought zero point four was little. <laughs> Well, yeah, that that was a, thing, a lot a lot less. <laughs> but but the thing is, zero point four is a shorter title. But it there's there's only so many reasons that you would choose that nomenclature for a title. But borderline, I feel like that's a word that can be used in a lot of different ways. Like the context clues right. aren't there, and so I have I have nothing to go on except what does borderline usually mean <clears throat> as like just the the standard definition, and. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't really give me anything else beyond maybe it's something about you know an in between state of someone right it, it could be like borderline to kill or borderline funny or you know borderline crazy it... I, i'm sorry I'm, I'm almost forfeiting this one because i can't i can't think of anything <laughs> else <laughs> you you have like 2 billion points it's fine <laughs> <laughs> I only what? have 12. Oh. <laughs> but you have 12 more than you had five minutes ago. So that, that's... Oh, all. oh, right. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're, you're catching up. All right. <laughs> okay. So what's the, what's the book? So, so Borderline is by Mitchell Baker. It is the first of a new urban fantasy series. And it is about a woman who has borderline personality disorder ah, who, who, is, who is hired to be part of a secret organization that basically is the immigration for fairies emigrating to America to become part of Hollywood. Uh, and so there is a, so they're, they're, easily, they're pleasing the border between our two worlds. And as well, it is also, as you both mentioned, a thriller as there is a mystery, someone, someone's gone missing. <clears throat> They're trying to track down someone, so that there's a, a bit of a police procedural to it. Um, but it's really, really deeply rich into what's like to have mental health issues, as well as physical disabilities, um, as well as dealing with this wonderful magical world possibilities um, that are opening up in it too. So it's you both got it really, really well. Um, and Joe, you're starting to figure out the meaning was great because it was intentionally to have multiple meanings with that title. So wow, there, there we go. So I guess I was kind of on the right track. I just chose the wrong <laughs> direction. You were on you were on all the right tracks. And if you could have seen my face trying to not laugh at you like <laughs> I don't know what these do, and I'm like because they're both right. <laughs> All right, since we're both right, uh, we both don't get points. <laughs> well, no, so Joe got more of it right. <laughs> oh, damn it! <laughs> Aiden, you get 24 more points, and uh, Joe gets about 11. Uh, oh, okay, <laughs> fantastic. This scaling is not fair. <laughs> All right, fine, 25 points for Aiden. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> One extra. Okay, um, I'll, I'll come up with the last book. Um, th this might be too easy. Um, I'm not going to read the subtitle of this book because I think that just gives it away. I'm just going to read the main title of the book. Um, it's Despair to Deliverance. Despair, Despair to Deliverance. Yep. Hmm. <laughs> Despair to Deliverance. <laughs> Let's see here. So, um, all right. Despair to deliverance. Um, <clears throat> I, I I feel like I mean the word deliverance brings to me mind imagery of you know in in American history the old West traveling to a new location you know, immigration um, you know uh, where deliverance would be like a destination you know uh, an old West frontier town. Um, you know, and, and the despair referring to just the, the, the struggle of the journey. So I don't know if it would actually literally be an Old West American town. I feel like it wouldn't be. Um, I get the idea of it more being deliverance is, de is a destination and despair refers to the struggle of the journey to get to um, deliverance. Okay. Final answer? Final answer. Sure. <laughs> All right. Um, Joe. So, despair to deliverance or despaired? Uh... To. T-O. 
I know, but is it despair or despaired? Despair. Okay. Yeah. Um. So it it sounds like a journey. It sounds like this is a story about someone that starts at a very low point in their life, which is you know that story fodder right there. Um, and from the, their despair, they eventually, by the end of the story, hopefully get to deliverance. They they reach some stage of overcoming or um, finding their goal or whatever it is. I I oh that's too generic. <laughs> I, I know I know I know I'm, I'm getting there. Uh, <laughs> so so buying time doesn't help you. <laughs> So I'm gonna go. Says the guy with 25 <laughs> points. <laughs> so going out entirely on the longest, thinnest limb in the world. I'm just gonna guess that this is science fiction because I know Aiden likes science fiction, and for that, that means this is gonna be something about someone that is maybe stuck on a planet or alone in the sp- in space or stuck in some kind of cataclysm sort of environment where they need to get out of it and by the end of it they find either a colony or some kind of um you know like the holy land or you know um you know that that kind of like oasis in the desert sort of thing where they go oh this is the colony i've been looking for my whole life and that's that's really all i can think of Okay, um, um, Joe got a little bit correct in his really generic uh, <laughs> definition. Of a um, so I'm gonna give him one point, and uh, because both of you were quite far off, I'm gonna give myself two trillion points. Oh, the top seven is mine. All right, um, this path to deliverance, um is actually a uh, non-fiction so oh. it. Oh, I had that, yeah uh, my second choice was that yeah it's um it's a memoir of a person with a uh, severe mental illness and how she overcome it uh, it was it's written by uh, uh dr sharon davini and co-written by her patient robin personette the person in the story itself uh it's quite a uh intense recount of of the experience of living with uh severe depression and uh suicide so it's it's a really good read for anyone who's interested in uh what it's like to live with uh mental illness and so one of the best recount that i've read so far Hmm. so yep um so in the end i guess i win (laughs) (laughs) wait wait wait. did you say did you say the subtitle all right oh the subtitle is um so the the main title is despair to deliverance the subtitle is a true story of triumph over severe mental illness oh well why didn't you say that <laughs> man we're totally giving it away exactly i don't know i probably would have still gone with the space epic <laughs> Oh, you weren't right. Yeah, you weren't wrong. That I like. I do like space epics. <laughs> <laughs> totally, okay, um... totally typecast you. <laughs> okay, I guess that's all the time we have today. Um, thank you for listening to us. Uh, once again, my name is Aidan Ng. I'm the author of the Chronicles of Terror web serial novels. You can find me online at Twitter at Aidan underscore Ng. Uh, you can also find me at my website AidanUng.com. That's Ng with an N G. And once again, I am Ryan Watts, author of the web serial Flocked, as well as other related stories. Um, and you, these are fantasy adventure storylines involving fairy tales retold, fairy tales sort of redone. Um, you can find uh, me online on Twitter at Guild of Feathers, or in real life at Best Buy, buy myself a toaster oven since age 40. <laughs> <laughs> and in, in, in last place, apparently, somehow... Despite all odds, <laughs> I am J.A. Waters. I have written Lincia and Oceans of Shelter and Not Off and a bunch of other stories. And you can find me at J.A. Waters Author on Twitter and watersartistry.com. Okay, um, thanks for watching us, um, listening to us. I hope we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. And uh, the fourth book, 
that I'm going to say is Jurassic Park. Can you guess what it's about? <laughs> Uh, it's it's oh oh it is it is about a, a, a dinosaur um, who was awoken from a coma and learns that he needs to go and get his driver's license re- renewed. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Matt Palace Podcast. My name is Aidan Ung, author of the Chronicles of Terror. Rep- rep- <laughs>